more so excitement. I think being affirmed like that really early in your life does something for you. It kind of, you have to teach fear. You know what I mean? That's not something that's necessarily innate. And so if you put a child into a situation where you've already told them that, hey, you can succeed in this situation, they're probably just going to go forth and do the best that they can. And that's what I did. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you always know, we focus on ultimately helping student athletes succeed beyond their degree. And we focus on stories, strategies, and successes. And today I'm excited uh, to, to bring our guests forward. And uh, man, this young lady I connected with, I'm not even sure, some time ago. Right. Connected with her some time ago. And and I'll just go ahead and introduce her just so we don't have to waste any time. So I'm so I, I guess today she's she's the founder of the free game program. She's a multimedia journalist. Go ahead and please welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast, Miss Bree Singleton. Bree, how are we doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be on this podcast with you guys. Definitely, definitely glad glad to have you. Bree, take a second and just uh, share a little bit about yourself because I know I didn't hit it all. We we, we cut it down, but I'm I'm gonna let you just, just just roll with it. No doubt, no doubt. So yeah, I um I, I started my career in uh radio. Actually, let me let me back up. I went to the University of West Georgia. Uh, graduated from there, played ball there for four years. Um, after I graduated there, I started my career in radio, doing marketing and promotions in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's a company called Radio One. Uh, four main stations, Hot 107.9, Magic 107.5, 97.5, uh, Praise 102.5, and a couple others. Uh, so big events for them, birthday bash, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I was doing that for about three years, and then uh, coronavirus hits, unfortunately. Um, and so, you know, we have to pivot. We have to pivot out of that. And so uh, I went a full year, uh, technically, uh, without full-time employment. Um, but during that time, I got a fellowship with Fansided which is a uh, sports writing company, uh, worked my way up from there. They turned me into a junior writer after the fellowship was over. Uh, and I'm about a month into a content program and associate role with uh, The Athletic. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying that. And in the meantime, I've started my my uh, my nonprofit organization, Free Game Program, that you, that you spoke on a little bit earlier. But um, same, same motive, I'm just trying to make sure that these – the student athletes are prepared for life after after ball, life after, you know, their athletic experience and make sure that they can enjoy that and use their athletic experience to propel them into the next next phase of their life. So that's my story. Um, and that's the that's the motive I'm trying to push out to all these other kids, because I feel like everybody else can do it, too. Dope, dope, dope. Talk, talk a little bit about writing, because, I mean, writing okay. isn't something that I feel comes easy to everyone. It does. Um, speaking from personal experience, so just talk like what what was your introduction with with writing, and you know how did you find this love and this passion? Oh man, that's a great question. Uh, cause I was actually talking about it the other day. Um, I actually my teachers uh, either put something in me or noticed something in me really really early. So I have recollection from like first grade where I wrote a poem, and my teacher loved it so much she had me like read it on the intercom to like the whole school. And so, you know, as a as a first grader, you know, you what, six, seven, that type of validation, you know, it does something for you early in life. So I just fell in love with writing right there. I think my natural transition was to uh, try to rap because I think that's what all kids do once they figure out they, they like to rap. <laughs> uh, they like to write. Uh, and so I did that for a little while. But, you know, as I get to high school and college, you know, I'm, I'm playing ball. Uh, I like sports. And so, you know, I'm thinking, you know, that's something easy to write about. I know the game. Um, I can put words together. I end up at a place called Swanee Sports Academy in uh, Swanee, Georgia, uh, where they host a lot of big basketball events and things like that. My parents had actually owned a concession stand there uh, and I was working my first job. And then one day I'm like, yo, I want an internship. Like, I want to be a sports writer. Uh, mm -hmm. So I found the people I needed to talk to. Um, they were on board with it. They let me work for a little while. I got my writing chops up turn that into a fellowship and then turn that into a full-time career. So yeah, definitely had some people pouring into me early in life that let me know, Hey, you might be okay at this. 
Um, and I always like to read. So kids who like to read, if you notice a kid likes to read, try to get them to write because it's a very, very valuable skill. And those go hand in hand. So my full time job is probably 90 percent reading. Um, and then I spit it back out into palatable uh, experiences for sports fans today. So. Wow, that's that's super yeah. dope. That's super dope. One thing I just want to just highlight is so one Warren Buffett said the one of the best ways to increase your network by 50 percent is by by speaking and mm. by, by verbal and by written communication. So yeah. you you right there just, just just dropped the gym. If the people didn't 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 pick it up, they better pick it up in the second <laughs> order. That's one right there for you. Pick that up for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swanee. Oh my goodness. I yep. remember going up there and playing in some tournaments. Yep. I probably sold you some fries in the uh in the concession stand. <laughs> oh man, wow. So yeah. at so at six years old, right? When when the teacher tells you that you're gonna read on the intercom, like yeah. you, you if if you even remember, right? Was it what was it? Was there any fear? Was there any hesitancy? Or you it was more so excitement? <sighs> it was more so excitement. I think being affirmed like that really early in your life does something for you. It kind of you have to teach fear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's not something that's necessarily innate. And so if you put a child into a situation where you've already told them that, hey, you can succeed in this situation, they're probably just going to go forth and do the best that they can. And that's what I did. Um, and so I was already playing basketball at that time. So I knew what fear and pressure was. So reading wasn't really pressure to me at that time. That's like mm. hitting a free throw was pressure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like reading on the intercom, something that I wrote and somebody already told me was dope was kind of just like, you know, get up there and do your thing. And it developed a confidence in me that's allowed me to pursue my career uh, all these years later. So I'm definitely thankful for that affirmation. Wow. Wow. So, okay. So earlier in the game, you, you, you were writing, then, then we got involved with, with the athletics. Yep. How did you know that this was something that you just wanted? Cause you said, you, you said, yeah, let, let's get the internship. And then now seeing where you are, just like you said, some of the radio stations that, that you've worked with and Radio One, mm -hmm. which I mean is major. Absolutely. How did you how did you know that this was your lane for you just to stay in it and just continue to do what you're doing? Sure. So, I mean, fortunately for me, I've always been one of those people who kind of knew what I wanted to do. I didn't know what job titles were, so to speak. But if you asked me what I wanted to be when I was grow up, when I grew up, when I was seven, I would say to you. I want to do something in sports and I want to do something in music. And that kind of continued for the rest of my life. I want to do something with sports. I want to do something with music. Um, and so obviously playing ball was the sports part. I used to want to be uh, Pam Oliver or like the sideline reporter. I used to want to be the sports center girl, et cetera, et cetera. And then I realized TV is a little tougher than I thought. You got to be on your A game all the time. You can't make mm. as many mistakes as you can. Uh, but then I also realized I spoke really well. So I was like, radio is just TV with the lights off. Um, so we can just do that. Um, and so I went to school. I went to West Georgia, uh, got a mass comm degree, and I focused on uh, radio. Um, and, and the summer before my senior year, I got an internship with Radio One. Um, and so I got to learn the whole business like that through the internship. And then the next summer, once I graduated, a semester went by and then a, a, an opportunity opened up full time and I was able to just step into that. So I always kind of knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I got into basketball watching Space Jam uh, whenever that came out early 90s. I saw I saw Space Jam. I was like, oh, I need that. I need that because my parents had thrown me into a bunch of different things. I was in the band. I was playing trumpet, drums, keyboard, softball. Uh, a lot of things before I even landed on basketball. So shout out to my parents for just exposing me to a wealth of of options. And I uh, found one that sticked, uh, ended up being pretty good at it. And then, uh, you know, it, it got the bills paid. Mm, man, that's a blessing. That's a yeah, blessing. Absolutely. Do, do, do you still have a do you still have a desire to to potentially do TV at some point in time? Absolutely. Um, just because, like I said, I, I feel like I speak well enough to do that. Um, it would just at this point take some preparation. Um, I know what preparation on the radio side looks like. I haven't been able to do the same kind of prep in TV, um, but I do definitely see um, see myself on on some kind of digital platform moving forward. Just because, like I said, I have the knowledge um, in different areas, whether it be sports or entertainment or even politics. Yeah, I, I try to stay well versed on a lot of different things. Um, but I feel like, I'm, like I said, I'm a multimedia journalist, so I feel like anywhere you put me, where I need to communicate, I can succeed. Mm, dope, 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 man. Yeah, put 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 you anywhere in the jungle, you still gonna eat. 
You know what I'm saying? Put hey. me on God's green earth. Oh man, I love it. I love it. So I, I, I want to rewind back. I want to rewind mm -hmm. back and just just talk a little bit about like the the environment of your household because you said your parents got sure. you involved in a lot of things, sure. but did they do anything that was around multimedia or journalism or were they just, you know, that they were putting you in these areas just so you were getting the experience? Yeah, they were support. They were just support. So my dad, uh, my dad played football coming up. I think he might've finished in high school. Uh, but neither one of them is, is really into media. Neither one of them is really into, uh, uh, entertainment or anything like that. Um, they were just just staunch supporters of whatever it is I tried to do. I think they realized as a kid that I had a lot of potential and that I was willing to work really, really hard at a lot of different things. Um, and so they just gave me the tools that I needed to support, you know, paying that AAU money uh, so that I could travel across the country and get a scholarship. They supported me in that. And, you know, it was never really a, a, a conversation really between my parents and my career choice, which is probably alarming to some people, but I feel like they always, we were always on the same page. Like I know what I want to do and I'm going to work myself into a position to get there. And so it was kind of just like, Hey guys, this is what I want to do. Um, and they were kind of just like, all right, well, we're behind you. And so if you need any help, let us know. And so, uh, yeah, they did a great job of just exposing me to different things until I found, I found the things that I really wanted to, uh, to, to grasp onto. Dope, dope. So talk, talk about the like the transition from basketball to doing what you do. Have you sure. seen there being any what 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 what's what's the word that we say transferable skill? Yeah. <laughs> talk a little bit about about that transition piece because I think absolutely, yeah, you know, I think that's very very important. I'm glad that you brought it up um, because there are certain life skills that I feel like sports teach you that you can't get anywhere else, um, especially when you try to transfer those skills into the workplace. So working with the team figuring out what people's roles are. Um, for example, for over the last year since I had, had been uh, furloughed from my job, I realized I like working with a really good team. I don't necessarily like doing things by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd rather be really, really good in my role that contributes to a larger, a larger effort by a team. So um, leadership, for sure. Communications. I feel like I can I can communicate with people from different backgrounds because that's all the team is. You end up on a college campus with people you've never met before, uh, people from different backgrounds, people from different households, et cetera, et cetera. And you've got to figure out how do I get this person to see life how I see it? Uh, and that obviously can translate into business when you're trying to launch things of that nature. Uh, but just the discipline, the hard work, a consistency, a resiliency, uh, that's the thing that I've learned about myself over the last year. It's been a tough year, guys. It's been a tough year. I'm not going to lie to you. I came out on the better side of it, but it was definitely due to my resiliency and, um, just, just, uh, knowing better. Um, I took a lot of step this year, uh, just to get better health wise, mentally, physically. Um, uh, but once we know better, we can do better. So just some of the things that sports taught me, and now that I can translate them into my into my everyday life, it's just made me a better person for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, what does self care look like for you? Because you said you know uh, getting, getting better mentally. Get, let's talk a little bit about that. What what what, 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 what is what does Bree do for self care? Absolutely, man. Well, I started therapy about a year ago. Um, huge, huge proponent of folks taking care of their mental health. I started therapy about a year ago. Uh, and that's been such a blessing to my life, man. One thing that I've learned about myself is that I'm in constant pursuit of, of self-improvement. Um, and when I find out that there are things about myself that I can correct or at least get better at, I won't stop until I do those things. And so therapy has been really, really great in helping me um, to just kind of understand some of the things that have gone on in my life. And I think uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that I started Free Game Program because I wanna, want to want to um, put more emphasis on that 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 conversation between mental health and and athletics, uh, because I myself was struggling with 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 quite a few things while I was a, a collegiate student athlete. And I didn't know what those things were called at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, now that I'm an adult, I know better. I can do better. I can go get therapy, uh, whereas I might have needed that, you know, while I was in when a, in athletics. So definitely taking care of yourself uh, mentally. Um, I've just gotten back in the gym for the first time. That's something I didn't really take too seriously when I was a player because the ball wasn't that heavy. But uh, <laughs> I'm back in the gym now a couple of days a week, getting my discipline uh, back in order. But I think it all starts up here, man. If you're if you're OK up here, you can make anything happen. Yeah, definitely. It, isn't isn't it funny, though, when you go back in the gym, I, I guess you had those flashbacks of, of when you used to compete <laughs> and then 
and then you go in the gym and then you realize that your lungs are it's not, not the same. They to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, uh, why am I, why can't I lift this weight? This why is why can't I breathe? Like this is not it's only been a few years. Like this should not the, the drop off should not be this swift. But no, as soon as you step foot off that college campus, like your college body stays there. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, the the drop off is the drop off is 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 it's, it's pretty sad in the weight room, but definitely don't go out there open gym and try oh, to do no. what what you used to be able to do. Nah, it's nah. See, my friends try to get me out there. I'm like, y'all, I'm retired. I'm 25 years old. I can't be having ACL surgery out here, man. I got to go to work. Like, I can't. I can't keep. But I'll get. In, I'll work out with you. You know, we get some shots up. But I, I had my time. I had my fun. That's the fastest way to tear an ACL. <laughs> Max, to, to too much. No. Yeah. Get out there with the young bucks and try to show them something. Exactly. It's like, no, nah, man. The young bucks for a reason. Yeah. This this, this, this definitely is, is, is not that. It's not that at all. <laughs> but, um, but talking about the way that you are giving back to the young bucks, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You, 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 got, you got the free game program. So when did this idea come to conception and when were you like okay i need to do this and i need to do this now sure so um great question i actually had the idea on my mind and on my heart for quite some time so i think i wrote it down in my journal september 2018 um and i guess the 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 story behind it it was really just my story as an athlete uh i'm not the most athletically gifted i'm short i'm 5 2 barely over 100 pounds but I worked really, really hard and I had really, really good grades. Um, and I was able to parlay those things into a, a half athletic, half academic scholarship. Um, and so while I was I was even offered a full a, a full uh, athletic scholarship, but my grades may be a more attractive uh, recruit because, you know, we can take academic money and give your athletic money to somebody who doesn't qualify. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing those things and knowing that story about myself. I wanted to do my best to spread that message to kids across the country that say, hey, you don't have to be this superstar athlete. You don't have to go to the NBA. Um, you can go D3 and still end up, you know, debt free, uh, which was always my ultimate goal. I was like, hey, I want to go to college and I don't want to have to pay for it. Um, and so now, uh, you know, fast forward, like I said, I had that that idea in 2018. Um you know, after I graduated and got my career and, you know, I'm looking around at different student athletes that I that I came up with are struggling to find theirs um, because I was putting in those the work earlier. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's my freshman, sophomore year and I'm already thinking about career moves. I'm already trying to get internships. So I'm already mm. building up my resume, et cetera, et cetera. Some of my counterparts weren't doing the same thing. Um, so I had that idea in 2018. I'm working in radio. I don't have time to really get it off the ground. Fast forward, the pandemic hits in 2020. I get furloughed and now I have nothing but time. <laughs> and so uh, and so but, you know, during that 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 time period, sports also stopped professionally and amateur wise. So you had high school students who ended their careers and didn't get to finish it. You know what I'm saying? They ended their career without an offer they're kind of in this gray area where it's like, what do I do now? My sport is over. My eligibility is up. Who am I? What do I do with my life? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so I took that time that I was furloughed for my job to officially get the business in order, get the 501c3, get the website, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, recently started a blog for it just to serve as an information source for people who may have questions about the recruiting process in any sport. Uh, but yeah, I took that time to really get it off the ground. Um, but that was my story, man. I feel like if I, Bree Singleton, can can graduate from college um, debt free with the limited amount of athletic ability that I had, uh, I feel like there's definitely information that I can spread and we can spread through free game to make sure that every every student athlete at least has the information that they need to be able to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Why are you sure change yourself? Why you say the limited athletic ability? That, that I'm you nice. Had? I'm nice. But it's just it's funny now that I think about it because like all of my. AAU teammates are like in the WNBA right now. And it's oh, funny wow. when I was 12, I was looking around the gym and I was like, she's going to the league. She's going to the league. And I would look at myself and I'm like, I'm not going to the league, but I could be writing about y'all when y'all were in the league. Like I was thinking like that at 12, you wow. know what I mean? So I always knew kind of what my path was going to be. And it's just funny to, to watch it come to fruition like this. But how did you know? How did you know that at twelve? Like, like was it you? You didn't have as much of a passion as seeing some of your counterpart because if you oh. surrounded by them, 
yeah, I deserve to be there. But I mean, that goes back to the mental health thing. It's it's it was a little bit of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. uh, because the team that I'm on, this isn't a regular AAU team. This is an AAU team coached by Antonio Davis, who played with Michael Jordan. This is an AAU team with Ken Griffey Jr.'s daughter on it. This is an AAU team with Diamond DeShields on it. This is an AAU team with Kayla Davis, who was just on the dream. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking around at the talent in the gym. My dad's a paralegal. I'm like, man, this is a different level of, of talent here. Uh, now, my, while I might, you know, while I might uh, belong here now, no, I don't have the same passion that these girls have because my desire is not to ultimately get to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I always wanted to do something with sports and I always do wanted to do something with music. I never really saw myself playing professional basketball. Uh, probably... I mean, yeah, maybe in the early days when I was six or seven and, you know, the thought process pops into your head. But the WNBA wasn't even that. I'm the same age as the WNBA. So mm -hmm. the prospect of that wasn't as enticing then. So I was like, man, I'm going to be on Sports Center or the radio or something like that. But I knew pretty early uh, at 12, 12, 13 years old, like, hey, I can carve out a lane with this sport that doesn't necessarily have to be on the court. That's real. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of that is just foresight. Like I said, I don't I've. I was a smart kid. I don't know how I knew what I wanted to do so early, but it, it never really works out like that. But I, like I said, shout out to my parents for placing me in positions um, to, you know, make, make things come to fruition. Yeah. 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 Shout out to the parentals. For no sure. doubt, man. They did the thing. They did the holding thing. Holding it down. Holding it down. <laughs> so what's your thoughts now just with seeing how things are moving with the WNBA? You know, it, it, it seems like it's a, it's a resurgence of the WNBA that, it's like they're they're elevating like like never before. So what, what, I, I'd love to hear hear your thoughts just about just about what's taking place now. Oh man, I love it, and it's 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 really dope for me. Like I said, now because I'm getting to see the girls that I came up with, kind of pushing that game forward. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You see the Lexi Browns, the Diamond DeShields, the people that I grew up with are are forcing it into the forefront um, now. And so I think you know whenever the conversations around the WNBA arise, people have to realize that the NBA is 75 years old. The mm. WNBA is 25 years old. Ooh. So the growth is not going to be comparable at all. You, can, you can't compare the two as entities because they're one's already at their finish line and one is just getting off the track. Uh, so, but I think, I think the women in the league now are doing so much in so many different areas, not just sports. They're doing stuff in politics. Uh, they're doing stuff with brands, et cetera, et cetera, that constantly keep you um, keep the WNBA on the forefront of your mind. Um, and so just me being someone in media um, and I'm going to start working with the athletic to help push their women's basketball conversation forward. I'm just proud to be a part of, of, of the movement because I think over the next 10 years, it's going to accelerate faster than it has in the last 25. Mm. Um, this year, this year, if nothing else should show us that, like, I think we've had more conversation around the WNBA this year than I've ever seen before. Um, so the next five, 10 years, it's just going to be an explosion of that. And I'm excited to be a part of it. Certainly, especially even with the women's college basketball scene Absolutely. picking up picking up a lot of steam and them getting more attention than the male uh, than the male NCAA tournament, which which I think is is is, is phenomenal. Um, just just watching um, those conversations happen, mm -hmm. and then the WNBA conversations happen. So now it's ultimately providing the attention that the WNBA has deserved this whole time yeah the whole time and I, and, I, and I appreciate the men you know what i'm saying i appreciate the men uh in the wnba i mean excuse me the, the men in the nba the collegiate players who have done their best to support the league because whenever you hear the negative comments around the wnba it's never really from men who respect or play the sport it's from you know the the, the naysayers the people who are just willing to give some negative comments off but the guys who are actually in the gym they're always huge proponents of women's basketball and you know, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. He was a huge, huge proponent of what we had going on. So I'm excited to just see how we we're able to push it forward. Yeah, yeah. And even with the aspect of the majority of the time, the individuals who say the negative things about the WNBA or whomever it might be, I know they would not want to get within those four lines. That's what I'm saying. I'm better than you. <laughs> like, I mean, if you just look it real quick, like, it's there's nothing to give it to you. <laughs> It's nothing. That's what they don't understand. And it's always like the most unathletic, the most, you know, unversed. But, you know, those are those are trolls that we have to deal with on our on our journey to get into where we need to be. So, you know, all we can do is, is count them as the clowns and, and keep it moving. We can't give them any more attention.
Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. So, so where does Bree Singleton see herself in five years? Oof. Let's see. I'm 25 right now. I'll be 30. Uh, I do see myself on some kind of digital platform that we talked about um, before. Um, I see a free game podcast definitely coming down the line um, just because it's necessary. Like I said, I think we need to be having conversations about, you know, hey, maybe your kid isn't going D1, but here are the options that they have. Or, hey, maybe this is how your kid should be approaching social media, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so just giving athletes some some tools and tips like that. Um, but I do see myself uh, getting into the sports reporting. Um, I did enjoy radio. Um, and when I did radio, it was uh, it was for our praise station, Praise 102.5. Uh, but just just who I am and, and my background, I feel like I could do that and be better at it in a sports in a sports realm. Mm. Um, so in the next five years, I do hope to be on some kind of digital platform. Uh, I hope to be writing more. I hope to be. Uh, putting free game in a position to really, really impact athletes across the, the country um, and not necessarily just on a local level. Um, but I just hope to be servicing, servicing the world and servicing my community in some way more than I am right now. That's really all I have. I hope, hopefully I'm still in good shape, in good health, getting better constantly. That's all I can ask for. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I got this other question before we dive into the two minute drill, but if, sure. if you could sit down with anyone uh, mm -hmm. living or dead, Right. You could sit down with him, had the opportunity to break bread and just talk about whatever. Who would one who would be oh, one man. person that you would want to sit down and just just, just have that conversation? Dead. Um, honestly, the first person that I can think of, and it might be kind of cliche, but it's really Beyonce. And not because of the fandom that I have for her. It's really, as I enter this next phase of my life, I'm really intrigued by like the level of discipline mm. and strategy and privacy that she's able to maintain. I think to drop an album out of the blue like that and nobody know anything about it, I think that that took the most discipline, the, the strategy, just, I would love to see how her daily operations work and how she balances that with her family. I think that's the most important and still performs at the level that she performs at. Um, I think that's one of the most incredible things ever. So I would probably say, I would probably say Beyonce and then LeBron James is probably one of my favorite play people ever as well. Just what he's done off the court in addition to what he's done on the court and the spotlight that he's had on him given the cards that he was dealt to where he is now, man, I would just love to hear him just deep dive into that whole process and what it took and what, and how he developed his team. Mm. That's what I want to know from both of them. What does your team look like? Because I feel like those are, those are the formulas for success for both of those people. That's real. Those, yeah. those, are, some good, those are some good ones. I like the way you broke that down because you wasn't, it wasn't about just for the aspect of hang out with B. I get to nah, hang out with I'm definitely trying to learn something, learn something from the people who have done what I'm trying to do for sure. That's real. That's real. So now, now, now it's time. It's time. We're going to transition into the two minute drill. <laughs> ready. Let's do it. Okay. And for everybody who this might be your first time listening to two minute drills, where I'm going to ask some rapid fire questions. And we're just going to see just a slightly different side of Miss Bree. <laughs> Bree, are you ready? Yes, let's do it. All right. Here we go. Favorite food? Anything Mexican. Mm, I'm with you. What's the last book you read? All About Love, Bell Hooks. Mm, okay. Okay. What's the most underrated cereal? Reese's Puffs. Mm, okay. Okay. Reese's Puffs. Okay. What, what's, what's your streaming show of preference? Of all time, Game of Thrones. I still haven't watched it. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> uh, it's my life mission. Like, uh, apart from free game and all that stuff, it's my life mission to get people I care about to start Game of Thrones. So I'm glad that you said that because I'm going to make sure that you start Game of Thrones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what, what's what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? Oof. One tip? Figure out what you want. Do you want to continue to play this sport? Do you want a scholarship? Do you want to play professionally? Do you want to parlay this into a career? Because if you don't want to put any of the work in to get any of those things, then none of it really matters. 
So once you decide what you want, if it's, hey, I want a college scholarship, then you know what to do. You got to get in the gym. You got to start networking. You got to get you some film. If you say, hey, I don't want to play professionally, but I do want a college scholarship. Okay, let's get you the college scholarship and let's look for some internships. Let's get your resume in order. Let's make sure you can get a career. So I would say figure out what it is that you want and be realistic. Those two things. Figure out what you want and be realistic. Everybody's not going to go D1. Everybody's not going to go D2. But there is a spot for you. There can be a spot for you if you if you know what you want and you know what's realistic for you and your skill set. That's what I would say. That's good, Bree. That's good. What and who who's who's one guest that you'd like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Ooh, one guest that I would like to see you interview. Hmm. I would like to see you talk to my sis Nia on air. She's done some really really dope things. She's doing some really good things with Nike right now, pushing their women's basketball conversation forward. Uh, Nia Sapp, she's on 92.9 The Game here as well. Uh, just a like-minded individual like myself, strong black woman doing really, really great things in the sports and entertainment industry. I'll definitely plug you with her. She's she is she's like that. Good deal, good deal. Let, let's let, let's let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Okay. Bree no Singleton, Bree Singleton, Bree Singleton. Bree, now, <laughs> now, 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 now go ahead, take take a take a second. Let people know where they can connect you, how they can follow you, and uh, just get in contact with you with all the dope stuff you're doing. For sure. As always, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Bree underscore Singleton. That's B-R-E underscore Singleton, uh, Instagram and Twitter. And then also you can follow my nonprofit 5013C free game program at free game program on Instagram and Twitter as well. Trying to build those up, get these student athletes some some good, valuable information, man. But yeah, rock with me on all social media. I follow back and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, let's work. Let's network. Dope, dope, dope. And, and I, I have seen the, the post and, and the content that you put out. It definitely is. It definitely is content that's valuable, content that's beneficial it. and content that's really going to help uh, a lot of people. I appreciate it. And I look up to you. I respect this podcast and what you're doing with it. And I hope to learn from it as much as I can. Oh, most definitely. You already you know. Hit, hit me up and I'll, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a <laughs> yeah, we'll be in touch for sure. Yeah, for sure. definitely. Well, well, Bree, thank you for taking the time and thank you for hanging out with, with the ballers and myself. Absolutely. It's an honor as always. Thank you so much and best of luck to you guys moving forward. All the ballers, all the ballers, you all just heard this episode. I'm excited. It was a good conversation. We had a really good conversation. Um, but if you have not connected uh, with Bree as of yet, be sure to go on Instagram and just like she said, follow her at Bree underscore Singleton, as well as follow the free game program at free game program on Instagram and on Twitter. And if you have not subscribed to the podcast, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. You can just type in Jonathan Jones Speaks and then the channel will come up. You can get access to Beyond the Ball as well as some other exclusive video content. So once again, this is Jonathan Jones and this is Beyond the Ball where we help you succeed beyond your degree.